So, welcome to the last part. Um, this one is about language extension and language embedding. So what we want to do is this. Here is an example model. We want to be able to, you remember our UI spec where we uh, specified, um, you know, fields with widgets and mappings to, um, to, to, to entity attributes. Now, what we've done here is we've created a sub-language of the UI spec language, which allows you or us, whoever, <laughs> to add validation um, data. For example, it says that the validation rule for this guy is that the length of the employee name must be greater than 30. It doesn't make much sense, but um, that's how it is. Or it says that if the employee for, for the freelancer checkbox, if the um, if works at field is set, then the freelancer must be true else the field freelancer must be false, things like that. And so what we do here is a number of things that I want to show you. First of all, how do we get this validation thing in here? And that is a simple case of language extension. Here is the language UI spec we had before. Here is the language UI spec validation. It extends UI spec and it adds a validated field, which is a field. It extends from field, you remember, field was defined in the UI language and had, you know, an editor which basically says there is uh, the, the label of the field, uh, the keyword field, the label, a widget, and then a reference to an attribute. Now the validated field adds an expression to that. Expression, now where does this come from? This comes from a reusable expression language. You remember back at the very beginning in the first session we talked about um, this expression language which we had variables and data types, we played in the playground. That is the language we integrate here. It's a reusable, completely independent uh, expression language. It's somewhere here in the project. We've imported it. And um, so the editor now basically looks the same way, you know, keyword, label, widget, attribute reference, and then the word validate and the expression. How can we get an existing, an existing field to you know, how can we add a validation expression? Well, we can do this. Well, first we have to import the UI spec validated language, of course, and then we can just grab this field, press Alt Enter, and say make validated. This basically runs a little wizard that replaces the field with a validated field. We can undo that, of course, um, if I find the key here. And so how does this wizard look like? Actually, there should be a way to go to it. So let's see. Alt Sorry, that was the wrong keyboard. I think the microphone shadows the keyboard. So go to intention declaration. This is an intention that's basically a quick fix. Uh, it has a text. It applies to fields. It's only uh, It should only be executable if the field isn't already a validated field. And then what it does is it creates a new node of type validated field. And um, it then, uh, you know, basically copies the data from the original field, which is the uh, node that's kind of on which we run the uh, quick fix, and then re it replaces the original node with a validated field. So that's a way we have extended the original language, and we have created a subclass of a concept in that original language with additional properties, and we've used the quick fix to kind of replace uh, the kind of original one with a new field with additional data. This is a good way to uh, uh, also support language evolution, by the way. You can just provide these quick fixes to kind of migrate to a new version or to something with a new bunch of new features. So, so far, so good. Let's close everything again. How do we deal with the expression? Because um, in the um, code here, right, we have the uh, expression here and for example this greater operator that comes from the existing reusable expression language now within this um, when, when we use expression here expressions here it only makes sense if we are able to point to some kind of data that's specific to this context like for example attributes of entities we're currently working with so we have to extend the expression language to be able to do this. So how did, does this work? Let's see. Let's close everything. So this UI spec validation language, um, as we can see, extends the entities language and the UI spec language 
and it extends the expression language, which is this reusable expressions language. And that gives us the greater and the plus and the equals operator. And we add new expressions. For example, the attribute ref expression, it's an expression. That is, again, the class from the reusable, reusable, reusable expression language. And it references an attribute. That's why when we press control space here, we can see, well, you can't because the video ends. <laughs> um, we can see um, the entity attributes. So once again, the usual trick, adapt the pattern, um, we inherit from the reusable expression concept, the abstract base class, point to a concept in our context now. Um, also, this length of and is set right here are new expressions. Length of expression is an expression that has uh, another expression inside and so on. Now, of course, the length of expression can only be applied to strings because that's the whole point. So we need a typing rule that says basically that the um, type of the expression element inside the length of expression right, needs to be a string type. And this way we can um, make sure that you can't do a length of an int or a boolean. There is more because um, here this equals operator is interesting because this true guy that is part of that's the true literal from the expression language right so its type we can take a look here its type is boolean type right boolean type from the expression language remember that <laughs> this guy the type of this thing is boolean but that is boolean the eBoolean from our entities language. So we have a problem. The original expression language was able to compare two Booleans with the equals operator, but it compared Booleans in terms of the expression language Boolean. And that guy is not an expression language Boolean, it's an entity language Boolean. Why does this work? And so basically what we have to do is we have to overload the operator equals so that it supports arguments of type entity boolean. So how do we do that? Well, the original uh, expression language, let's see here, it had in the type system, in this binary comparison operations, it defines the types using this so-called overloaded operations rules container. So basically it says for an equals expression or any of the others, if the two arguments are doubles, then that's fine, the return type is boolean. If the two arguments are integers, that's also fine, we return boolean. If for an equals expression, the two arguments are boolean, then we also return boolean. And that works for equals, but it also works for, you know, it could be made to work also for and and or, but I'm not sure I have and and or in the language, so forget that. Um, in the sub-language, I'm then overriding this. So I can go to the... Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. can't see it here. I can go to the RBAC validation type system. And here is the binary expression overloaded, and this basically says if any of the two arguments in an equals expression is the boolean from the, you know, I can go here, that's the entities boolean, e-boolean type, then that's also fine. Whenever I have a rule, then that's kind of correct. Uh, it, it's valid from a type system perspective. And um, I return uh, boolean as well. So that's why I can use, I can mix the booleans from the uh, expression language and the booleans from the entities language. So in that sense, the type systems are also extensible to handle new combinations of types. So there's one little thing missing, but it's not really new. And the thing is that um, if we look at the generated code, I've closed it again, so let's uh, regenerate company structure. Once again, in the generated code, we now have these, um, you know, validation checks. So there is a retrieve method, and whenever the content is wrong, we throw a validation failed 
error. And you can see also, by the way, how we've translated this stuff to Java. I haven't uh, shown that much because the generation is trivial. The expressions look in Java the same way as they look in our uh, expressions language, but I still have to write a generator that maps expression language expressions to Java expressions. Uh, it's the .blgen project. And if you look at this, it basically contains a bunch of trivial cases. You know, multiplications map to multiplication in Java. And uh, the length of is maybe a bit more interesting, but it's defined in yet the other language and so on. But that's not the interesting point. The point is, again, that we have to interject or inject this additional code into the existing uh, UI language. And the way we do this is, once again, using a placeholder. So if we look at the original UI spec language here into the generator, it has hope. Actually, it's right here. This value assigns. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Sorry, I'm uh, somewhat. Where are those placeholders? Well, I can I can show you a feature of MPS. If you don't find your way around, what you can do is you can go to, in this case, the expert blocks language. You select. The placeholder statement and you can say find usages find usages uh, the instances anywhere in your project and I can see this in my UI spec language oh it's right here I uh, I've seen it well you maybe some of you have seen it I haven't so uh, we have another placeholder here it's called pre-assign and using this approach we then in the UI spec validation language right here we you know, look for the placeholder statement with the ID pre-assign and then put in the actual validation code. The validation code simply reduces the expression and then the uh, expression language to Java generator kicks in and you can see here where we have generated the code for, for example, the length of expression. It simply uh, takes the, you know, the body of, or, you know, the expression we're lengthening off and calls dot length the Java method. And uh, it does the same for other expressions. So I don't want to show this at this point. So this allows us to reuse existing expressions, expression languages, or any other language, embed them syntactically, which is a big deal in, in some parser environments. It's not a problem here because there is no ambiguity in grammars. That's why I didn't talk about it much. We can embed and adapt type systems and so on. So we can really make a completely meaningful integration between the two systems. So this is almost the end. I want to do one more very quick demo of a bonus feature. We might be out of time, but, um, well, I'll come back with one more.